And that urban art form hip-hop, originally American, was taken up not just in Africa, but in post-communist Eastern Europe too. Now, a hard-hitting biopic of legendary, ill-fated Polish hip-hop crew Haptophonica offers a fascinating insight into that world. The film is called Yes Ten Bogem, or You Are God, the name of this, their best-selling single. Back in 1990, Magik Rahim and Focus formed hip-hop trio Paktophonica in dreary Silesia. Their music became a rallying cry for a generation of young Poles during the momentous years when the country shook off its Soviet-dominated past. But the charismatic Magik was a troubled young man who suffered from schizophrenia, and when he committed suicide, aged just 23, the impact of his death was as deeply felt among his fans as those of rock stars Kurt Cobain or Ian Curtis. The director is Le Chec David, and the film has apparently been 10 years in the making. I asked a film critic, Philip Bergson, what he made of it. This is a really captivating and very successfully put together film, which, while apparently true to a uh, hugely successful um, Polish hip-hop young teenagers, late 1990s, uh, with a tragic ending, uh, comparable perhaps indeed to Control, Joy Division, the main singer, Magik, his stage name, committed suicide about the same age as uh, Ian Curtis, he was 22. It's in Katowice, uh, Silesia, the mining area, depression, the transition after communism. All of those things are in the background, but the whole film somehow completely captivates. The director is best known as a documentary maker. How far are those skills visible in you know, this film, which is, you know, about hip-hop music. Well, this is his second feature film, and I think he's made the transition very delicately from documentary, because you see um, Katowice, you see that it's uh, a depression, it's a time of change between the sureties of communist life and the glowing but not quite attained possibilities of capitalism. The film is in cinemascope. It really looks like a real movie, like a film for cinema. And, for example, there's one scene where they're shooting as they begin to become a little successful, a kind of very low-budget video clip for the hip-hop group. And the main actor, Magik, is high on a hill, snow-covered, and just delicately in the mists you see the towers of the mines and you see they're not functioning, that no one's working there. And there are little touches like this which are not uh, laboured, but I think convey a sense of a real place, a real time, but also give it a kind of an artistry that can appeal beyond those people, the Polish audiences, who know of these famous people. Many of our global audience may not know that American hip-hop you know, turned out to be this important force in, in Poland. Um, how do you think the film will play today, both for polls looking back at that year and perhaps for a wider audience? Well, so far, I think the audience in England has been a mixture. We have a large Polish community. There was a premiere with a lot of English people who responded to the humour in the film because what comes across is the little delicacies of daily life, of the family life, of christening, of the Christmas, of trying to find a present for the child. All of that, thanks to the skills of the actors, I must say. I mean... The main actor, Marcin Kowalczyk, it's a, it's apparently a debut performance. He's never been in a film before. He won the Best Newcomer in Gdynia, and he clearly is somebody with a big future. He's supported by a well-known actor who's been in a number of films, Thomas Schuchert. And again, you feel these are real people. You don't feel they're just incarnating legendary rock stars. Um, there is a kind of a human dimension to it, and I think that is what conveys uh, emotion and beauty, truth, to an audience internationally. And for Polish people, because it's, it's only a little over a decade ago that, that, that it's set, um, how much is there a sense of reassessing up here, or even nostalgia? I think there's certainly a lot of nostalgia, even for the, the dark side of communism and of after communism, where at least people had a job or people had certain things. I think there's a certain amount of ironic nostalgia, for sure. Um, but on the other hand, I think what is interesting is how um, maybe the audience today, as we see the characters in the film, are trying to come to terms with change, come to terms with the new society. Uh, and I think the film will appeal both in a looking back way and also in a sense of hope, of optimism. And it becomes more than a story of these particular individuals. It becomes a story perhaps about empowerment, 
about how you fight against the environment, about how Europeans today can find an environment in which they can live.